What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna to be talking about one of the cheapest pistols on the market and one of the most available. We're gonna be talking about the High Point. We're not specifically going to be talking about the C9, the nine millimeter, or the 380, but kind of in a combination. We're gonna be talking about the model as a whole and whether or not it's right for you. Now, there's a lot of controversy about this pistol, and that's because of its price range. It's very, very cheap. Some can be had from $80 all the way up to $200, so that makes them available to people who wouldn't ordinarily be able to buy firearms. But that also puts them in a class of firearms that is notoriously unreliable. So today we're gonna go over the pros and cons, the accuracy, the reliability, what I've seen over the course of several High Point reviews. As this video is being filmed, I have shot two to 3,000 rounds through high points, and I've done several full reviews on different high point models, three different pistols, and a couple of rifles. So I can give you my experience, along with the experience of shooting hundreds and hundreds of guns and doing gun reviews for the last seven years. So I'll be comparing them a little bit to other guns in the market, but also be talking about kind of what you get for your money, and again, whether or not the high point is right for you. Before we do that, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's you guys who make videos like this possible. We try to make the most honest gun content on the internet, and we make that for you and not the industry. And sometimes the industry doesn't love that, so we appreciate you allowing us to make the content that we love to make, and apparently you do as well. We just hit a million subscribers, and we can't thank you enough. If you wanna join the Patreon squad, all you have to do is go down to the link in the description and sign up. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS, it could really use your help. It's a youth shelter, so please get on there and support those kids. And then finally, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Shields. Shields is one of my favorite sponsors. We like Shields so much, we've been shopping there for years. It's the sporting goods store that's always been in my area that I've gone to the most. I get hats and clothes and all kinds of cool stuff there, and we love the people who work there as well. They're a Midwest company, I'd really appreciate if you'd support them. They have all kinds of cool stuff, so go down and check them out. Now. This is a High Point 380, and this was, in fact, the cheapest gun I could buy last year. We actually got this new for uh, $80. I've also had several High Point C9s, and they're pretty entertaining, even one that was very upgraded, which actually didn't help it out that much. Now, the High Point, as you see it here, has a very large slide, has a single stack magazine, a pretty small grip by comparison to the slide. It's a rather large and heavy pistol even though it has low capacity and it runs a blowback action. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, the blowback action is simply using the recoil of the gun to reload the ammunition into the chamber from the magazine. So when the gun is fired, the slide rocks back, hopefully with enough time for the uh, round to be ejected out of the chamber and then a new round put into the chamber. Now the issue I have with the blowback action is actually a couple of things. First off, they need to select a heavier weight slide to work because they have to have the right weight with the spring to cycle the slide because that's the way a blowback action works. There's no other mechanism other than just weight and spring. So it makes the slide a lot heavier, making the overall weight of the gun much heavier than you would get with some sort of Browning action or maybe Bergman system or something like that. And you also get, not only do you get a much bigger and heavier gun, but you get more recoil even though you get a heavier gun. And the reason for that is just simple physics. If you have more reciprocating mass coming to the rear, if you have all of this weight coming to the rear and slamming to the rear of the pistol every time you fire the gun, it's gonna feel like much more recoil even though you're actually getting a very small caliber. This 380, this CF 380 right here has more recoil than most of my nine millimeter pistols, even though it fires a lot less powerful round. And that's just simply due to the way the high point works. Now high point chooses to use that system because of how cheap it is. And they're trying to hit a price point. And that's going to be the theme of this video is that yes, it works, but it's not ideal, but it is in fact cheap. Now, the second problem with the system is going to be the size of the chamber, in my opinion. As you can see there, most pistols actually have a cutout in the chamber uh, that makes it a little bit higher. Now, some would argue this makes it more reliable. I completely disagree. And the reason why is, is because in my opinion, you have more of a chance of malfunction that way. And the second reason is you have less space to clear a malfunction. And the malfunction. Well. It actually has three rounds in there somehow. That'll happen. <laughs> I was gonna say it was gonna work well, but that 
it's like, nah, fuck you. Most of the common pistol malfunction that you're gonna have are you're gonna have a much harder time with a much smaller chamber. So it just makes an issue as far as clearing malfunctions and it also makes an issue causing more malfunctions. So in my opinion, uh, not only is the blowback operation not great, but the size of the chamber is not great and then the material that they use for the slide is also more brittle than a normal pistol like a Glock or an m &P. Now another negative is gonna be your interface with the handgun. Now a lot of people say high points aren't accurate and that could be true, but most of that is not mechanical accuracy. A lot of times people talk about mechanical accuracy, but the reality is, is the accuracy that you get out of the handgun. And that's gonna be the interface with the sights, the way you can see and line up the sights, how accurate the sights are out of the box. That is part of accuracy, and the second part of accuracy generally is going to be the trigger. Now, the lighter, the crisper the trigger, usually the easier it is for a person to push that, press that, whatever terminology you wanna use, all the way to the rear without misaligning the sights. And in the case of the high point, that's very difficult for a couple of reasons. One, it does have sort of a straight but fulcrum trigger, which is very strange and it takes a lot of getting used to when you press it down. And the second reason is the trigger is very heavy. A lot of poundage that you have to fight every single time you press the trigger. And when you press the trigger with a lot of weight, generally you tend to dip the gun one side or the other. Right-handed people generally shoot low and left and left-handed people generally shoot low and right. Now, a third thing that decreases accuracy and also uh, is part of the problem on recoil control, besides the slide coming back to the rear very hard because it's very heavy, is the minuscule grip that we have here. Now, you can see on an average pistol, you usually get two thirds grip or even three quarters grip, whereas with the high point, we have about half the grip and half the slide. Now, that puts the axis much higher over your hand, which exacerbates that recoil as it comes back. And on top of that, you have less grip and less texture and less surface area to hold on to. So not only do you have more mass coming backward, but you have less mass to hold on to. So not only do you have less grip with your right hand, but you have very little space with your support hand. Now your support hand, despite the internet's popular belief, is actually your recoil control device. If you want to control recoil, you need to squeeze harder with your left hand. That's not doing anything. Your right hand has to articulate the trigger, but your left hand does not. So the more space you have for your left hand, the more uh, surface area you can get that left hand on, the better you can control that recoil. So along with the recoil coming back, you also have less to control, and then you also have less to hold on to to keep the gun in line during that trigger press. Because the other thing your grip does, people say grip doesn't matter with, with accuracy, I disagree completely. Because even if you have a shitty uh, trigger pull, and even if you're pulling the gun all over the place, if your left hand is keeping that gun in place, it's still gonna hit where you're aiming. Another issue in addition to the grip being small is because the grip is small, you also get a small magazine. And on top of the magazine being short, it's also skinny. So not only do we have a short mag, but a skinny mag, so it's only a single stack, and you only get seven plus one, or eight plus one, or even nine plus one, depending on what magazines that you actually purchase. However, another thing to go along with the magazine is I would recommend sticking with the small ones, because in our experience, when we shoot the high points, most of the reliability issues I've seen, not only with the carbine, but with the handgun, come from the extended mags. have been from this piece of shit here. Now, this is a theory more than a fact, but I believe that when they put those extended magazines on there, they probably don't change the spring at all. And if they don't change the spring, eventually you can have magazine issues because the spring tension in the magazine is a large portion of the reliability with your handgun. The spring has to work in conjunction with the gun itself to get the roundup in the chamber at the exact time the other one is exiting the chamber. So in this case, if everything is not working in synchronicity, you're gonna have some real problems. And the cheaper the magazines, the cheaper the components. That's just how things work. The handgun can't be made of all stainless steel and 7075 aluminum and all that stuff if it's gonna be $80. They have to use subpar materials just to meet the price point. So you can assume pretty safely that the magazines, the spring, and the handgun are made of a metal that's kind of the equivalent to melted beer cans. Now, the cool thing about High Point is, is they do have really good customer service. So if you do have some problems, they will fix them. I've actually met the High Point guys at several different events, and they're very nice guys, and I believe these are even made in America, I think maybe they're out of Cleveland, which is a plus, but I do prefer when guns work out of the box and you don't have to send them in. And I prefer never to find out whether a gun company has good customer service or not because their product is excellent out of the box. As far as capacity, you're gonna be short. 
accuracy, you're gonna be short. But as price goes, you're actually doing pretty good considering the reliability. If you stick with the standard magazines, in our experience, you're 90, 95% reliable. Now, that's not a very good ratio in my personal opinion, but it's certainly better than nothing. And that's where High Point kind of fits in. If you're one of those people that wanna buy a firearm and you're never gonna shoot it and you just might use it once in a while, maybe the High Point fits you. The people that could really use this gun, in my opinion, are people that just simply can't afford something else because a firearm is a firearm. Firearm. And in most circumstances, just having a firearm is better than not. And the gun does work most of the time. And if you were to open up on somebody that broke in your house with this and you got a couple of rounds off, there's a really good chance those people are just gonna flee. Or if you had to shoot them, bullets are still bullets and it still fires a nine millimeter. So as long as it goes off and you've practiced with it, you can make it work. Now it's less inherently accurate and fast as other guns, but you still do have nine rounds or eight rounds of nine millimeter. And if you do learn to shoot this and you buy a couple of mags and you figure out which one's reliable, you figure out which ammunition is reliable. Is this a possibly functional pistol? Absolutely. It's kind of hard to say this, but is it better than nothing? Yes, it is, and that's kind of the niche it fits. If you can only afford to pay $100 or $150, this is certainly the best gun in that class. There are other guns in that class. There are cheaper guns like the Jennings. There are cheaper guns like the Sky, the SCCY. I think that's probably actually a little more expensive than this, but the High Point is definitely the king of the budget guns for a reason. The reason why these are so popular is because yes, they are $100, but for $100, you do get a moderately functioning pistol, and that's an incredibly low price. That's an incredibly low entry fee to get into the self-defense game, to get into the self-reliance game, that I'm willing to take care of myself because the police response time is way too long game. And this is gonna be better than a call to 911 that nobody's gonna show up for. And in my opinion, if you can't afford another handgun and you're worried about a break-in or you're worried about protecting your family, your kids, or maybe your uh, single mom who works at a diner and she walks through a bad neighborhood at night, maybe this is right for you. And it bothers me that a lot of YouTubers dismiss that because yes, it's not a SIG 320, yes, it's not a Glock, but it's a fucking handgun and it works most of the time. And if you go in knowing that, maybe it is right for you. Now, one thing I wanted to add right before we go is I wanted to talk about maybe what you could get if you spend a little more. Now, one of the issues with handguns is people buy them and they don't shoot them. And if you're gonna buy a high point, at least bring 50, 70, or $100 for some ammunition to try the thing out, because it certainly does have a learning curve and it's much different than a normal handgun. And if you've never shot a handgun before, they are much more difficult to shoot than a rifle. So they do require practice, they do require training, particularly just handling the firearm. A lot of training can be done with just dry fire. You can get a high point and practice practice malfunction clearing with dummy rounds. You can get a high point and practice your grip. You can practice trigger control by doing dry fire practice. There's many, many videos, I have several, where you can just practice essentially for free if you get this, and I would recommend that. I would recommend getting the mags in and out because it's a single stack. I would recommend trying to get used to the sights and the trigger pull by doing dry fire. A lot of the issues that you can have with a high point can be overcome with the correct magazines, the correct ammo, and honestly, maybe you're gonna have to send it in a customer service once or twice, but if you're in the realm of only paying $200 for a handgun, uh, I think it can be overcome. Now, the second thing I wanna add is if you do choose to pay more than $100 or $200 for a handgun, you can, in fact, get into a much better handgun. If you go up to something like a Beretta APX, or a Canik, which is gonna be the three to $400 range, you can get a much better handgun right out of the box. The other thing you can do is you can get used guns. Now, used quality guns are still quality guns because like, if you get a good uh, quality used car, people think that's a no-brainer, but a used Glock is still a Glock. It's not gonna break because someone else shot it 50 rounds. Most See, houses are used houses. Most houses are used houses, that's absolutely right. I don't know why this doesn't filter into the gun world. And I would suggest that if you are looking at a high point, the other thing I would look at would be a used Glock, maybe a Gen 3 with no with no frills, or maybe uh, M&P Gen 1. Those can be had for very similar prices to high points these days, and they're an extremely good pistol. Those are the two I would look at, but uh, there's plenty of offerings out there, but if you're into the high point, I just wanted you guys to know the pros and cons. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.